Hi, Martin here. Thank you for joining me for this week's Turning Project video. I hope you are all well and you have had super creative weeks in your workshops all up and down the country and all over the world. This week's project video is quite complicated. It's an inside out turning um, on a sycamore base and this is uh, sycamore too. The inside has been gilted and there's a hole in the bottom for an LED tea light and the outside as you can see has been coloured. Uh, I haven't stuck it into its base yet um, because, because the piece is so fragile um, and quite wobbly when you start putting pressure on it. I can't put too much pressure on it to produce the kind of finish that I like. So I'm going to have to get myself a can of lacquer um, and get it back onto the lathe and give it several coats of lacquer before, um, before I glue it into the base. The whole thing took, a, uh, took has taken what two and a half, three days to film. This is day three of filming, um, but it was a lovely project, quite scary, and I hope you enjoy it. This video is an abridged version um, of the full length one. The full length one is available on my website for free until the end of April 2016. Uh, so if you want to see the full one, you can head over to the website and download it, compl download it completely free of charge. Um, and I'll also put together um, a worksheet. Um, for it as well, giving all the dimensions and stuff and the step by step, step by step steps. Uh, there is a big mistake in it though, which I won't put into the worksheet obviously. Yeah, there is a big mistake which um, shows that I wasn't thinking in entirely clearly about what, it, what I was doing. And bear in mind, this is only the second inside out turning I've ever done. Um, so, without further ado, here is how I turned the inside out sphere on a sycamore base. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. For this project I need to have four blanks that are pretty squarely cut and I need to glue them together. And you use, for that you use a hot glue gun which I have here and I'm going to put a blob of hot glue up there and a blob of hot glue down there, flip them back round, line them up and squeeze them together with a clamp. I need to sand off one side of this to make it smooth so then they can join together like that. So let me so same as before got to work really quickly. I'm going to run some glue. Ooh, come on. And some glue along that one as well. Put that one up. Right, as you can see I've got a nice cross join on this end and a nice cross join on this end. It's the morning after, the night before, um, and I've printed off some of the templates. Now that, that's going to be the outside template and this is the inside template. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut it out and then put it on the blank so I can see roughly sort of where I need to, to cut and stuff and make sure that it's all nice and square. So for that I'm going to utilise an Easter egg box because I, I, I do like to reuse and recycle if I can. I've got the piece in, in between centres and I've cut out one of the templates. I'm going to lose the tool rest for a minute and tape it up with orange Jaffa tape they called it. Um, and I'm not going to take any chances when turning this tenon. Um, so I'm going to take the parting and beading tool and just nibble away at it very carefully until I get down to here. Well, 
Well, that went well. <laughs> Pleased with that. Right, so Okay, done the inside and I'm really happy with that. Um, I'm going to finish it down, I'm only going to finish it down to 150 because I'm going to be gold gilting the inside so I want something for the gilt to hold on to. So I'm going to take a little bit of 80 grit just to smooth it over a touch. I've sanded it down to 80 and I'm going to leave it there. Um, I'm not going to take it down to 150 because as I said it's going to be gilted. And now I've got to turn the tenon for the inside, for when I turn the outside of the piece. So if you remember, I've got to turn ugh, that kind of recess here. So I've got to take off all this, all this here, and then turn a recess back there. The design is changing as we go along, only slightly though. I don't get it, it's just not, there's something not quite, something not quite right. And I can't put my finger on it just at the moment. But, onwards and upwards as they say. <laughs> So here's the piece off the chuck with the tenon on the first end. But if I split it and then turn it like that, you can see my original idea of when the... Oh! Ha! <laughs> oh, God! Right, okay. It really... <laughs> oh, poo. Well, we can but try, can't we, eh? All is not lost. Right, anyway, let me show you... <laughs> uh, right, let me show you what I mean by the tenon on the bottom. There. The recess that I turned originally, right at the end there, is now on the outside of the piece. And, of course, I the chuck is never going to grab that. What a plonker. So, what we're going to do is we're going to carry on regardless. I need to sand these joints down so everything meets nicely for gluing. So I'm going to glue the two sides together, two halves together in independently. So I'll glue that one together first and then that one together second. Right, okay, it's the day after and I've had a think about what I can do with the uh, slight faux pas that I made yesterday with the tenon on the bottom. And here is the LED candle. 
that I want to put in the bottom. But um, I've got no way of drilling a hole in there. So I've, although I've got enough space up here, enough wood to make a tenon, I think the safest way to do this would be to drill a hole um, with a, what's it called, forcing a bit um, in this end and then turn, now turn the tenon first then drill a hole for this to fit into. So. Gosh this is really scary. Right, um, I need to go and find um, a decent drill press as mine that you can see over there isn't exactly up to the job and it doesn't have um, a throat big enough to put this. So I'll be back when I have drilled a hole. Okay, success! I managed to drill the hole in the bottom for the little candle to sit in. And I'm really, really pleased it didn't, uh, it didn't pop out on me. Um, but because I've had the design modification here, um, my template has been rendered useless, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, but I can still use, um, still use it as a guide for me to turn this bit kind of by eye, so it's not all bad. It feels good. There's, I think, there's enough meat um, in the in the width of the tenon not to worry about it too much. Um, I'm going to leave the tape on and start at this end, start on the right hand end um, in making the outside of the piece. So I'm going to use the bowl gouge again and just start eating away at it carefully. No, I'm not going to do that with a tool, that is making far too many strange noises for me. And then I'm going to get a saw. Now this is a huge saw, um, because I don't have a flush cut saw. So I'm just going to saw... Wowee! Gosh, that looks really nice. Right, I'm going to take some 80 grit or even some 40 grit to the top, uh, to the top of that, and um, just smooth it over. There is quite a lot of wobble. <laughs> wow. Right, I have hand sanded it down to. Well, I did try and use the power drill, 
a power sander but it just wasn't going to play games. Um, so I've hand sanded it now down to 400. Next up I'm going to spray it black because I, I want a nice contrast on the outside of the piece because the inside is going to be gold gilted. So I'm going to get the black and the airbrush and spray it black. Oh yeah, I'm liking that a lot. Okay, I've had some lunch um, and this has dried off nicely. Now because I'm talking when I'm doing this, I'm not wearing a respirator. Um, but I would recommend that you do wear a respirator if you're going to do this. Um, I'm going to fade from a deep blue round into kind of yellow and then down into red I think. I'm not sure yet, we'll see what happens. Right, royal blue. Um, for the sake of those who are going to ask, I'm using um, chestnut spirit stains, uh, the rainbow range. Um, I'll put a link in the description to um, so you can see the product. Right, here's the blue. Right, just going to fade the blue from here round. Yep, that looks okay to me. Take the blue off. Yeah, then yellow. So yellow's going to go from about here, just around the sort of the bulbous bit. And some red at the bottom. Um, you would normally put black on as like an undercoat, but I don't want to strip everything off. So, because I just want to darken it down a smidge. That's what I was looking for. Right, I'm done with the airbrush now and I just need to leave all that to dry. Um, I'm going to take uh, Compiègne Liberon Gilt Cream, which is the bright, bright goldy one, um, and lock the spindle and apply the gilt to the inside of the piece. See, th this is why the inside of the piece was only finished was only finished down to about 80 grit, I suppose. Because by finishing it down to a fairly high grit as it were, low grit rather, um, it gives the it gives the gilt cream something to bind to. Well that looks quite nice actually. Right we're now on to day three of the turning and I've got the original design here for the base of the circular <laughs> sphery thing. I need to take off at least an inch, which is um, a bit disappointing. So I need to take off at least an inch of this um, in order to get the shape that I want for the uh, for the bulb. I'm playing off the bottom, reverse it in the chuck, um, and then we can start shaping um, and digging out the recess for for the top.
and now I've got to start the top and I want a recess for the tenon to sit into um, as well as the top to sit neatly on top of the piece but I need Bang on! Right, I'm going to draw around the top. Um, I haven't got a shape in mind for this. But I'm just going to make myself another little mark. A few millimetres on the inside of the diameter of the base. So I've got a flat going from sort of here into here onto which the base can sit. Phew. That looks quite nice. Right, let's get the top in and see how it looks. Yep. I think that looks quite nice, don't you? That'll do. Right, I'm going to finish that down to... 400 and then I will um, put the finish on it. Like that. That's come up really well. Very pleased with that. Now we need to finish the top. The last time we saw the top um, was, well, yesterday, um, and I had to leave the, I had to leave the gold gilt to go off, um, overnight, and now it's gone off, um, I can buff it up, um, I'm not sure if, uh, kitchen towel will do a particularly good job, or whether I need to get, I think I might, <laughs> might need to tear apart an old t-shirt, um, um, I'm going to use an acrylic sanding sealer over the outside and I'll, I'm going to apply it with the lathe stationary with the sanding sealer dried and rubbed back I'm going to put Hampshire Sheen on it I've not tried it on a project like this before and I'm going to apply it with the lathe stationary about, I did think about lacquering the piece but following my last effort at lacquering which wasn't at all successful I thought um, Hampshire Sheen is probably the easiest way to go. Right, I'm going to leave that, oops, I'm going to leave that to dry whilst I go and have lunch and then when I come back we can buff it and then when I've buffed it we'll be finished, finally. It's only been three days. <laughs> right, I've been um, I've been and had some lunch and now I'm I'm hand buffing the Hampshire Sheen now it's gone off with the uh, spindle locked um, and it's come up nicely it, it's come up about as well as um, I could get it with um, a hand buffing because obviously I can't be very vigorous with it because the piece wobbles um, and I'm using a, a duster as well Again, some lint-free cloth would be better, but I haven't got any. So I'm just going round and I'm just buffing up. Yeah. And now what I've got to do is put it together. And here it is. Here is the finished item, finally. It's been um, a mammoth task getting, uh, getting this done, but I'm really, really pleased with how it's come out. And uh, as I said when I was buffing up um, the Hampshire Sheen, 
um, a lacquer on top of, uh, of this will be the way to go but I don't have lacquer at the moment so in a future project perhaps I'll come back and, uh, and lacquer it but for the moment I am chuffed to bits with this uh, it's really good. Thank you very much indeed for watching. I hope you have enjoyed um, the video. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube, then please do like, share and subscribe. And as I said at the beginning, the full length version of this video um, will be available uh, on, uh, on my website for free until the end of April 2016. Um, yeah. Um, I'll see you on Friday for Turner's Journey and I'll see you tomorrow for another or the first part of uh, the Wood Turning Beginners series and again next week for another turning project video, probably not as complicated as this one. Thanks very much, bye for now.